our featured mask tonight is that of Johan Hedberg. And he told me this morning his uh, daughter loves SpongeBob. And there's SpongeBob Moose on one side with the goalie stick doing a little dance. On the other side, SpongeBob's buddy, Patrick Starfish Moose, <laughs> on the other. So he's got that covered. And his daughter would certainly love that. And there you see his nickname on the chin. And on the back, the uh, Thrasher 10 year crest. They are hoping and they are positioned. If it were to start tonight, they would, on a technicality, be in the playoffs, but they're currently tied. And there's just a log jam of teams in the Eastern Conference that are within striking distance, and over half of the games still remain to be played. So, all the more reason why every game like this one is so important to them, to the outside. As you know, it's the year of the mask, and we're featuring Mike Smith's mask tonight. That was the lightning bolt, and there's the lady of the sea, lightning bolt streaming from her eyes into the front of the mask. She's on the front of a ship. It's kind of a nautical theme here that Mike Smith has going. This particular mask he used at the beginning of the year, then went to a new one, and there you see a shark being hoisted up after being caught. And inside, unfortunately, although she doesn't look too bad, there were no worse for wear, is again the lady of the sea. But he wanted a nautical theme, you know, playing down in Tampa Bay. But, Doc, that's the mask that he used to begin the season. Then he, he had another one, but Victor Hedman stepped on the back of it and cut about four inches out of it. But fortunately, it was the mask and not Mike's neck, although Mike's had kind of long hair. He said he did give me a bit of a trim on the back of the locks. It was <laughs> that close to a dangerous play, and that's why those masks have been such a terrific addition for the goalies. Here's it's a featured goalie mask of the night, and it's a coyote on the on the right side and the left side of Ily Brzgalov. And there he's had the Western theme, the desert scene. There you see the horse, and again the coyote. Caution coyotes, and the devils have to pay attention to that. There's the names of his two sons, and Briz is on the uh, chin. And he hasn't taken many on the chin this year. He's laid a few on the opposition shooter's chins with some of his big saves, but right now he's in a fierce struggle with 11.37 to go. The team tied 2-2, and he's facing one of the best goalies at the other end of the rink. Stevie, let me tell you, he knows it. He realizes who he's playing against. Well, the mask came in handy for this man, Thomas Focun, and he told me this morning, kind of an old frills mask. I just wanted it simple. There you see the ferocious... No, uh, no the ferocious... <laughs> Panther on the side, and then down in front, he's got the P, and you see the paw holding the P, and then on the back that you see a lot, the goalie's children's initials, and there they are on either side of the insignia. But he's kind of an old frills goalie, Doc. He doesn't try and be flamboyant. He just tries to stop about 40 pucks a night, and he's been doing that very consistently. Tonight already, the Devils have 25, so he's gonna see, uh, they think the average is around 34.8 or something, so the Devils could easily reach that. Well, it's the year of the mask, the mask man. That's 50 years since it was first dawned, and tonight we're featuring Steve Mason's. There you see the license plate with his nickname Mace on it. That's obviously the Ohio license plate. And did you know Columbus was named after Christopher Columbus? What was his ship doing in the middle of Ohio? Doc, you answer that one. And there's the old Ohio State uh, Penitentiary, which is the new building uh, that the, uh, the uh, Blue Jackets play on, was built over. And there in tribute to uh, Steve's grandfather, Ray, who was uh, the uh, name of where he fought during World War II, which was Lancaster, and there was a poppy there in, in, uh, in honor of poppies that represent, as you know, Doc, the Canadian Armed Forces and what they sacrifice yeah. every year. Canadians wear poppies on their uh, lapels. Here's Patrick. Uh, goalie designs on Mass had a humble beginning in Boston with Jerry Cheever, 1970. Just a white painted Ernest Higgins made mask. He got a black marker, just did some drawings on his face where there would have been stitches. That's all he had, but it was really cool. A lot of people remember how distinct that was. Let's go ahead 40 years. Now it's 2010. Tuka Rasmus, beautiful. You know, the bear claw over the uh, the logo. And then uh, on the front, you got that ferocious looking mouth of the bear hanging over the uh, forehead. And on the back, the flag of Finland and the name of the goaltender, but the most distinctive aspect of this mask is that golden cage and yes indeed folks that is authentic gold that cage alone 
costs 700 extra dollars because it has gold flakes in it and it's baked on and it makes the mask much stronger and it's overall uh, folks, as you might wonder what masks are, $1,500 for the most basic, up to $2,500. This one here was around three grand. but you know equipment managers, Doc. They've got budgets and responsibilities. That's they have right. to be good negotiators. <laughs> this one, they negotiated down to $2,500. But the last thing about that cage is, it is stronger than some of the white painted cages as well as the chrome. That one's only been changed one time by the uh, Boston Bruins, so it was money well spent. It and was. was cool. My question is, is it the gold that makes it better, makes it stronger? Uh, yes, that's what they're, they're suspecting. It's baked on, obviously, the, the paint is. Pretty interesting. And he has been golden here tonight so far. Can a diamond-studded mask be far <laughs> behind? <laughs> well, goalies would certainly be worth it. If it, even if it costs 10 grand, right? Oh, my uh, goodness. Oh. Well, here. Well, we're going to show our feature on the mask this year, and it starts with Kerry Lettinen, and it's an, obviously a Dallas Stars mask. There you see the Texas Longhorn on the chin, but he's a big Chuck Norris fan, and, of course, Chuck Norris is always a superhero in his movies. He was also a Texas Ranger. That might have had something to do with it, but, you know, Doc, Kerry Lettinen, they're hoping that he plays like a super hero as well and the thing is I don't know if you know this I was informed by my uh, son-in-law that Chuck Norris has a big following and there's jokes about how, how uh, strong he is and a couple of jokes are it's like Chuck Norris has counted to infinity twice Chuck Norris can slam a revolving door when Chuck Norris does uh, push-ups he doesn't push up he pushes the world down there's like hundreds of them so he's got this cult following and Gary Lettinen, also a fan, has put it on his mask. And he's hoping that, uh, as well as there, you see the finished flag. But as well as the uh, Dallas Stars management, they've been a big investment in him. And he's going to be the key to this team as it starts to retool itself and to become what it was 10, 12 years ago when they had all those great players and won the Stanley Cup. And I wish so there won't the be a Norris trophy in his future, just Norris on his mask, I guess, <laughs> right? Hoping for a Vesna sometime. That's right. Well, we had a close-up of Marty Brodeur's mask. How about the guy at the other end? Nidamaki's his name. There you see Shark biting through a stick. And on the other side, remember his name is Nitty. That's his nickname. And he picked that up, as you see here, with a machine gun in the shark's hand and his uh, children's initials on the back of his mask. And, Doc, as you know, it was Kenny Hitchcock, old guy like you and I, that remember Frank Nitty from the 30, Chicago gangster, and his, obviously probably his nickname was Nitty, his, uh, his um, nickname. And so they've, they've given Anterio that nickname, and that's why the machine gun is a shark. If you're wondering, what's that got to do? Uh, first time, Marty uh, Turco has had to wear a different mask. There you see the MT on the chin. Told me he didn't know what number he was going to have, so he just did MT. Now it would be 30. There's the Hawk logo. But a lot of goalies have themes, Doc, and for him it's gargoyles. Ferocious-looking gargoyles on each side of uh, the net, and they're sitting on a brick wall, which is what every goalie wants to be, a brick wall. And also I wanted to mention, Doc, he has his children's names written uh, throughout his mask. There's three of them. And they're all written on there, a little bit hidden, mm -hmm. but uh, they are there, none the same. But nonetheless, one of them's not named Red, is it? No. Probably not. No. Okay. Touched ahead here by Langenbrenner <laughs> and fed in. We don't want to be veiled about this. It's coach of Michigan with Red Bulls. Gordon. But anyway, mm -hmm. carried on now. Uh, we're featuring a goalie mask tonight that we know you haven't seen. The theme of this is Jonas uh, Enroth, and it's from top to bottom. Rock solid rock wall on the side, the current logo with a couple of cross sabers. On the other side, it's the third jersey label or logo with the saber going through the middle of the B. And there you see his home country's flag as well as Hockey Fights Cancer. And that rock solid wall extends all the way to the back plate. And you know, except for the one goal, he has been that rock solid wall. And what do you quick look at Devin Dubnik's mass? He's a uh, young. Goaltender for the Oilers. There he's got scenes of uh, outdoor hockey, pond hockey, which is what we've seen a lot tonight. That's appropriate. And that is a puck stuck in a snowbank. 
which often happens when you're playing pond hockey. But what I like is on the back. That is a giraffe with a goalie mask because that is kind of been his nickname at six foot six. And he has, his arms and legs have looked that long tonight at times. And you can't fault him on any of the goals. And I, I gotta say, Doc, there's been five or six plays that he's made that should have been goals for the Devils, but haven't been. And so it is what it is. It's 3-3 with under five to go. Andy Green comes across. To you know, we've had a very obvious situation here with the masks. We've overlooked Chico's. Longtime Islanders goaltender. You saw the one with the, with the wire. I can only imagine what it was like to have to get molded for one of those that fit right up against your face. Well, yeah, at the beginning, Doc, you usually went to a dentist. They put two straws in your mouth, put a Vaseline on your face, and then they laid plaster of Paris, wet plaster oh, of Paris, great. to give the, get the configuration of your face. Then they'd let that harden, pull that off. That's what the Vaseline would do. Then they would pour a hard substance with more Vaseline in the inside of that mold, and then they would lay fiberglass over it, and basically it was form-fitting, and it, it, it helped you with not getting cut, but with bruises and broken bones, it couldn't prevent that. And, that uh, mask actually, Doc, as you know, I had to finally buy that back three years ago on eBay. So it was very expensive for me. Was it stolen? Uh, no, I made a trade oh, earlier. Oh, okay, so, so you got it back again. I did, yeah. It was, it was like 11 grand, but I was happy to get it. Uh, Rogi Vashon, I don't even remember, I was just talking about some of the masks in, in that sale, and Rogi Vashon, who had a great mask with the LA Kings, this went for uh, 32,000, and that one of Jerry Cheevers with all the the uh, uh, stitches on it. Yeah. You know, that was a $34,000 mask. So I guess I should, you know, I shouldn't feel too bad that no. I, maybe I, maybe I stole it for 11 grand. I don't know. Well, let me ask you this. How long did you have to keep that junk on your face before it was set? Uh, oh, it would set up very, very quickly. Once you had the, uh, the plaster of Paris on your face, you'd use a blow dryer to dry it a little bit quicker. Then they'd push it off and then you were pretty much done. Then the rest was done in the office. Uh, and you didn't have to be a part of that until you came back for the fitting. And then you would just, you know, sand it off, cut the eyes, see if you like that, and put some air holes in it. And then I had a young girl on Long Island paint it for me, a high school student, Linda Spinella, and the rest is history, as they say, Doc. That was the Long Island uh, design in, in orange there. That was the one she painted for you? That's right. And when I saw Roly, uh, Dwayne Rolison having Smitty's and my uh, mask painted on his, I was very honored. But he's that type of guy. Very conscientious, you know, enjoys the history of not only hockey, but especially goalies like you do. And so it was a nice tribute to us. I guess it was. Here is Clarkson spinning one. Dwayne Rolison going from the Islanders to the Tampa Bay Lightning has a new mask. And the theme beside his nickname is Thor, the Greek god of uh, lightning. And there you see lightning bolts abound everywhere, but on the back, it becomes personal. His sons, uh, Brett and Ross, are gonna be down on the left and the right. And then a young man by the name of uh, Kelly Ryan, right there, KR, in the leaf, the, uh, in the uh, uh, shamrock. Uh, that's a very special young man to Roly, uh, Steve. He would come to, to uh, Roly's uh, goalie school year after year, and unfortunately he got a terminal illness and died. But the TDLO stands for The Dream Lives On. And Roly just loved that young man and was very close to him, and he wanted him to be remembered each and every time he plays. And uh, that's the kind of guy Dwayne Rollison is. He's a friend of everyone. I, uh, he went out with him after the game, and he good friends with Phil Hughes, the pitcher for the uh, Yankees, Steve. Quick shot off the draw and a save made by Dwayne Rollison. Now, what I tried to do when Dwayne would leave the table, I'm trying to bring Phil Hughes over to the devil side. Right now, he's a Tampa Bay Lightning fan. He had the Lightning jersey on when he was down there for spring <laughs> training camp on Friday. But he said he had come to a Devils game, and maybe we can have Marty Brodeur or somebody talk to him. And, See if he'll change allegiance. I doubt it. We'll get to work on that. The okay. Yankees, of course, train at Legends Field. Just a very short trip down Dale Mabry Boulevard from the St. Pete Times Forum where the Lightning play. Here's Travis Zay 